All right. Well, thank you all for coming. I'm so excited to finally have this demo with you guys. Uh, like I said earlier, it's better late than never. And what's a better holiday uh, to get this done in than Halloween? It's my favorite. Um, so today, uh, if you guys have any kids at home and you want them to watch, this is a super kid-friendly uh, uh, demonstration. We're going to be making some big pops, or if you don't have the popsicle sticks, uh, we're just going to call them truffles. Um, and we're going to, it's a no-bake recipe. You don't need actual cake or anything. We're going to be using uh, Oreo cookies and Nutter Butters. So, and then uh, we're going to make some Jack Skellington faces, uh, some little spiders using uh, pretzel sticks, and um, little mummies. So um, let's get started. Um, what you're gonna need to start off with is some Oreos uh, in a baggie or in a bowl is fine. You want something where you can smash them up really good in. Uh, if you have a food processor and you don't mind using that, you could definitely use that. But I have some rolling pins. I got two bags, one with Nutter Butters, one with Oreos, and we're just gonna get smashing. So you, you use a rolling pin and roll them out. That's really the easiest. Um, for me, and you want to, you can use um, regular stuffed Oreos. If you do use double stuff, we're going to use less cream cheese um, than you would if you were using normal uh, stuffed cookies. So you just want to make sure you smash it up really easy. Again, this is super kid friendly. They can bang away um, on these cookies. And the kids usually have a really fun time doing that. Uh, you want to make sure you have some bowls handy. We're going to put all our crunched up cookies in a um, bowl. And then we're going to add a little bit of cream cheese. Um, when you're adding cream cheese to it, you want to make sure that you add a little bit at a time. Because once you add it in, there's no taking it out. And we don't want a cookie that, uh, a cake ball that's too crumbly, because then it won't stick together. And we also don't want one that's too, too moist because it, it'll just, uh, won't stick to the stick if you're gonna use a stick. Um, if you're not gonna use a stick, then if they're a little softer, that's fine because the candy coating will keep it all together. So you just really wanna mix them up good. My Oreos, get down on the nutter butters. You could also use any flavor um, Oreos that you want. They have so many flavors out there. Um, I think they even have like a pumpkin spice flavor. So those would be perfect for a Halloween treat. I'll uh, make a recipe and send it out to Julie to forward you guys so you have a written uh, recipe to refer to. That's about it. These ones are done too. All right. So I got two bowls here. Get all that good stuff off the bag. You want as much of that soft filling as we can get. How about how many cookies did you use? This one was about 15. Um, you could use as little as four to, if you have just want to make like a couple for your kids and you just have like two kids. That'll make about um, two to four, depending on the size of cake pop that you want. Okay. But well, if you only have four cookies pop. left in your bag, because <laughs> huh? yeah. you've, you've eaten all the rest. <laughs> Um, so here's our nutter butters. You can just 
just crush these straight into a bowl. If you have like a nice uh, solid wooden spoon, uh, you can crush all those right in a bowl. But there we have that. And then we're gonna add a little bit of cream cheese to each one. Now, while you're doing this, you can get um, some chocolate started. You could do it two ways. Uh, one on a double boiler, like you guys see over here, I got a pot of water that's got about an inch of water. You wanna make sure the water does not touch the bottom of your bowl. And then again, here I have it with uh, our white. You wanna make sure that you don't overheat your chocolate. If you overheat chocolate, it's gonna seed. It's gonna start to like caramelize and there's no melting it ever again once it does that. So once you start seeing hard chunks come back after it's melted, you've gone too far and started to seize your chocolate. So here I'm gonna use about, I'm gonna start with a tablespoon or so for each one. So Val, was it about the same for the nutter butters, about 15? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's start out with that. We might need some more. I'm going to grab some gloves real quick. And then this was also a real fun part with the kids. Um, you get to crush this all up and you wanna make it into a Play-Doh. You want it all to come together. And you mix it all up. Definitely gonna need more cream cheese. But see how it's starting to come together. You want it to look all sticky and shiny. You know, Chef Val, I have to tell you, I've made lots and lots of cake pops, um, but never have I used cream cheese. I've always used cake and frosting, and it's mm -hmm. always kind of um, it's always kind of a guessing game depending upon how much moisture is in your cake and what kind of frosting you use. So it, it, this seems like it would be so much easier and it would give you a much more consistent shape and mm -hmm. consistency. I mean, oh my God, this is like a, a breakthrough for me. Hang on, Erica, this may be a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the cake pop was originally cheesecake. Yes, the yes. The very first cake pop was made out of uh, balling up cheesecake. Nothing wrong with that. No. Yeah, and but you're definitely right. It holds because of the cream cheese's consistency. It, it holds up so much better than yes. a really thin frosting. We had a, a cake contest for Valentine's Day, and I did um, a, a heart shaped cake with cake pops on the top that looked like truffles because it was in the shape of a like a Valentine candy box. Oh, that's and awesome. They were really tasty and they looked great, but I'm telling you, they were much more difficult to work with. Red velvet yes. cake is not easy to work with because of all the red dye. Yes, yes, that's true. Oh my God, this is a game changer. <laughs> oh yeah, the cream cheese is just so good. And it's you don't have to make more frosting. You don't have to buy that super sweet uh, frosting. Right. Or even and make a cake. Huh? Yeah, and you don't have to make a cake. Exactly. I make a lot of cakes, and what I would do is when I cut the tops off, I save that in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So when I get a order for cake pops or I just get a bug and want to make some cake pops, I use the cake pops that I cut off. Yeah, well, it's easier after the cake has been frozen, too, to work with. It does help with the consistency, but, man, this yes. is truly a game changer. Ooh. So you can see already that it's really coming together. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more. See, I'm only adding a tablespoon or a teaspoon at a time. Because once you add it, like I said before, you can't take it out. It's mixed in for good. But this is going to be perfect. Now for these, I also have um, some candy eyeballs that I was able to find at Ralph's. You could also buy uh, most of these products at Joann's and Michael's. All right, so that's what we're looking for. We want this big ball. So there's a solid one. And then once you get this texture where it's sticking together, you're gonna portion out your cake balls. So however big you want them. Or how little. And then again, you don't need sticks for these. Little bit off of these. And that's great. All right, so on standby, I also have a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. So if you want to roll these out, get your shape. Make sure it's really compact. You want it all to stick well. And then they could be, like I said, truffles, or we could stick them on the sticks, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. But again, you wanna really get it tight, roll it out into your balls. And then if you can, I recommend sticking them in the freezer while you prep your other ingredients or like what we're gonna do, we're gonna start uh, mixing the cream cheese in our nutter butters. I'm gonna stick these in the freezer and then I'll be right back to finish off the nutter butter. So it's the same, same process. Keep adding cream cheese until you have the right consistency. Novell, Chefelle, do you, is it necessary to use like a filled sandwich cookie or can it be just about anything? You could use just about anything. If you want to use uh, Chips Ahoy, crunchy Chips Ahoy, I'd recommend the crunchy ones, not the soft and chewy. Right. Um, and then you're just going to have to use extra cream cheese. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's part of it. So the frosting just helps the cream helps. cheese bring it together. But if you don't yes. have frosting, like, you know, if you want to use right. mint right. Girl Scout cookies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Eric's like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, that's what I love about these is they're so versatile. You can use just about any crunchy cookie um, and then add as much cream cheese as you need to. Um, I've also seen people squirt a little um, uh, whipped cream in there oh. too to get a, a softer texture so it's not just cream cheese. Okay. Or a cool you could whip use... if you're a fan of Cool Whip. Or mascarpone. Oh yeah, that would be wonderful. Oh, you could do a like a tiramisu with a little bit of espresso powder. 
And I saw recently at Ralph's, they have Nespresso chocolate chips. Oh. So Brittany, did you hear that? A whole new cake pop just now. Yeah, that is a wonderful idea. I'm going to have to try that. But yeah, lady fingers, <laughs> the mascarpone, and then that espresso chocolate, just melt it just uh -huh. like we're going to do in the double um, boiler. Ooh. Chevelle, what's, um, what's the favorite that people ask you for? Which one do they usually ask you to make? Um, they, people love Oreos. They Oreos. love just a familiar, I think, mm. flavor. Um, yeah. but sometimes I'll just get an order for like a cake, lots of chocolate cakes, and I'll just, I want cake and cake pops. So, um, like I said before, I just cut off the tops. Uh, of my rounded out cakes because I want a nice uh, even cake. And then I'll use just the leftover cake from that to make the cake box. Mm. And then the frosting that really works well for these, if you do want to use frosting instead of a cream cheese is um, an American buttercream. Um, American buttercream is just softened butter, powdered sugar and vanilla. And then if it's too stiff, you could add a little bit of um, milk or almond milk or something to it to thin it out. But um, that one works best because it comes up really stiff. My go-to frosting other than that is a Swiss meringue buttercream, which is uh, egg whites and sugar and butter. All right, we got our consistency about right. Oh, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Don't want it so crumbly. So the trick is, is just kneading all of that cream cheese into the cookie. You don't want to see any of that white. You want it really mixed in. That's much better. All right, I'm gonna grab my tray so we can roll these out and put them on it and get them ready. Just like the Oreos, you want to really compact it in there and then form your rounds. So the size that I'm creating fits in the center of my palm, probably about an inch, an inch and a half in diameter. You can make them smaller if you like. This is a good standard size cake pop. Tanya's shaking her head no. <laughs> They're fine that big. <laughs> you need at least two bites. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Three. You your food should be one to two bites. Yeah. This is a little large. It's kind of fun watching somebody else work during lunch. Takes your mind off of what's going on. It does. Relaxing. <laughs> it is. And I'm always up for new baking ideas. Always. Me too. Me too. This is like watching like the little kids watch someone play with toys. <laughs> 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 All 
Uh, Chef Bao, can you talk about some of your favorite classes from the Rec Center? I've taken some classes from you there. Um, yeah, I, I just love cooking anything, really. Um, anything that has to do with food, whether it's cute or savory, I love it. But um, I really miss my um, a taste of series. I would do a taste of and then we'd go to some other country and make something there. So I've done a taste of Italy, a taste of Cuba. Um, what else have I done? Um, we've done Middle Eastern uh, foods and, and I've also worked with a lot of student organizations on campus. Um, so I've worked with the Middle Eastern group, the Asian Pacific student organization. Um, I was right before the pandemic hit, I was gonna work with the Native American group. I was so excited to work with one of their chefs, uh, but wasn't able to. Um, but I really just miss all of that the connection with the students and, and trying new things. I'm always up to trying new foods because I'm so adventurous and I'm not picky at all when it comes to food. All right, I'm gonna stick these in the freezer for a moment. And then I'm gonna show you guys how I got the chocolate where it is now. How did I never know about all these cooking classes? How did I miss that? Because you know, I love me some cooking tips. <laughs> um, I am still doing a couple of them each quarter. Are you I, I one in December? It's a. It's gonna be an Instagram live though. I, I feel like I get so much more participation from people scrolling through Instagram um, than I do setting an actual time for a Zoom where they have to get the link and set certain time aside for the whole class. Um, so that's what I've been trying this quarter. And you have a YouTube channel, Chef Val, the YouTube channel you have, and you can go back and watch them anytime. You, right? Yes, I, I do have a lot of YouTube videos uh, mm -hmm. on there. It's called All to Taste on the SRC website. And I have just uh, quick tips um, on how to like chop an onion, how to chop herbs, how to do lots of different things, how to make Spanish rice, um, how to make homemade pasta, so there's a lot of those on uh, SRC YouTube page, and it's called All to Taste with Chef Bell. All right, so over here, again, um, I have a double boiler with about an inch of water. You wanna make sure that the water does not touch the bottom of the bowl. And then you also wanna make sure it never boils because we don't wanna overheat our chocolate, but it will seep. It gets really, really hard and it'll never melt again. So are you using chocolate melts? I am. I, am. I didn't have any black ones, um, so we're gonna be using blue, and I have white. I'm a lazy chef, I use the microwave ones. <laughs> Uh, these are microwave ones. Uh, I just want to show you a different um, option in case you haven't done the double boiler. It does allow you to monitor the heat a lot better because sometimes if you overdo it in the microwave, it'll seize it as well. Um, so if you are doing it in the microwave, you want a microwave safe full and you would start with 30 seconds, mix it, and then 15 seconds, mix it, 15 seconds, mix it, 15 seconds, mix it. And um, until you get that right consistency and you want it to flow. You really want it to pour. I don't know if you guys can see that. Because you want it to thinly coat everything. You don't want it too thick. And we don't want it seized up. So there's a, there's a right time for the chocolate. This started with solidify because it got a little cold, but this one was not good. Um, I also have some in uh, piping bags that I'm going to have to throw back in the microwave. Um, but again, you start with 20 seconds and then it's 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 until you can get it nice and um, thin so you can pipe it out of these bags. Most of these bags are microwave safe. All right, 
I have um, two different kind of popsicle sticks. You can use either one if you'd like to. Um, one's just longer than the other. I also have some pretzel sticks we're going to use as legs for our spiders. And then I have two kinds of eyes. I got some large eyeballs and I got some tiny eyeballs. All right, I'm going to stick these in the microwave for 10 seconds and then grab my cake balls out of the freezer. If you're feeling ambitious, you could probably make your own eyeballs out of royal icing, right? Yes, or you could pipe them with chocolate. So that's why- Oh, I chocolate, okay. I hadn't thought about that. So yeah, I often use uh, the piping bags if I don't have any pin guys, and I just do that. Awesome. Chocolates are looking good. I bet, I bet her house just smells amazing right now. <laughs> it does, like chocolate and cookies. I love it. Oh, yum. I wish there was smell a vision. <laughs> All right, so I am going to be using um, some sticks on a couple of them. I have this strainer that has these perfectly sized little holes that I could use as a cupcake stand while I prep my cake pops. Little kitchen hack. Now, if you are using a stick, you can't just stick the stick straight into the cake pop and expect it to stay there. So what you have to do is dip it inside of the chocolate. And then you can make a hole with another stick and then stick that right in there. And that's your glue for your stick. So we can go around. I'll do three Jack Skellingtons. And then the spiders, we're going to not do sticks. And then for the mummies, we'll do a couple sticks and then a couple with them. Right. So uh, you can stick them in the freezer again at this point to solidify that, but I'm going to go ahead and just move them to the side so that we could do our others. Now for our spiders, you want to take um, some pretzel sticks and we're going to use them as little legs. Cutting them very even. So, Chef Bell, you don't have to put the icing on the little pretzel legs to make them stick. Uh, we're actually going to pour chocolate on the outside and it's going to kind of adhere all those sticks to it. For some extra um, glue, you can. Good question, Erica. You know me. 
Chef well, I was thinking Parker. the same thing. I'm like, how is they? How are they going to stay? And that looks like a spider. And these ones were not um, using the, the pretzel sticks as a holder for our cake pop. It's uh, putting the chocolate on the sticks is really so that you can sit there and actually eat it like a lollipop. Because if it's not in there, um, on the inside, it will just fall off. It was still a little soft. I preferably put these in the freezer for a little bit longer. So if you have that time, I would definitely do that. One more. Ooh, it broke that. We'll have little eggs. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Our little truffle spiders. And then For our spiders, I'm going to be using the blue. Um, I would usually use a black, but I didn't have any black. Or um, you could also use just a regular chocolate color. But again, you want it nice and runny. And for the spiders, we're just going to pour it right over the top. Mm -hmm. They're mutant spiders. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing them a little quick and the cake isn't as stiff as I would like it or the pops. So just stick them in the freezer for a little longer. You really want it to go over the sides and through, through the legs. Here you could stick on a bunch of little eyeballs. Make one with a giant eyeball. A couple little ones. These are so fun to make. There's so much you could do with them. Two, one, one big one on that guy. And there's your little spiders. See that? Little spiders. Those are very cool. Cute. Those are so cute. I feel like mine wouldn't look like that though, but they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> I, <it. laughs> just as good. 
or even better. Those ones were so fast. So they're kind of wonky, but it's Halloween. Everything's a little crazy. So it's totally fun. Now, for um, these ones, you can do the same thing with your white chocolate. A little hot, it's almost starting to seize. I could see it. Hopefully it cools down a little. And you want to grab another spoon. Now, with this one, you could do um, several things. If you don't want to cover the whole um, thing with the um, chocolate, you could drizzle it. But I'm going to cover a couple of them all the way. Starting to see. No. See how fast chocolate can seize if you leave it on the burner too long. So we're going to cover a couple of these. Val, may I ask you what um, brand candy melts you use? I find some. Brands are better than others, and some of them are much more temperamental, especially white. Yeah. I find white, the white is really, correct. yeah, okay. It really is. Um, I agree with you. But these ones I'm actually using for the first time, and it looks like a little bit more temperamental than what I normally use. But I normally use the ones from Joann's. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if I have. The Wilton? Oh, yes. Yep, the Wilton chocolates. Okay, yeah. Uh, also, another tip, make sure you do not put food coloring in your chocolate. So if you have white and you want to change it to color, no go. Sorry, not going to happen. It's going to make your chocolate seeds. Um, and I've tried it before, and that's how I learned the hard way. I even tried to use uh, the powders, and those didn't work uh, for me either. So you got to get the color that you want in uh, the candy melts already. All right, I'm going to go ahead and warm up my little piping bag of chocolate one more time and get it into good consistency. And then we're going to pipe our uh, mummy stripes on top of these mummies. Does anyone here have a tradition they do with their families or friends for Halloween as far as baking treats? Like I know my mom, she would always make um, popcorn balls. So we always, we knew... Halloween, every Halloween, we're going to have a popcorn ball. <laughs> we did the same thing. It was always popcorn balls. I don't know what it is about that. My mom just usually starts with the, um, she always makes carrot cake once fall comes. It's not necessarily Halloween, but carrot cake is our fall go-to with the cream cheese frosting. Yum. This is pumpkin pie. <laughs> We have it from like October all the way through November and Christmas. <laughs> the pumpkin pie cheesecake or just pumpkin pie? October is usually pumpkin pie. Once we get closer to Christmas, it turns to cheesecake. Uh -huh. like well, another thing my mom does. Oh, go ahead. Sorry is caramel apples. Like she tries, she'll make her own caramel apples too. I was just gonna say the closer we get to Christmas, the more the calories go up. <laughs> that looks great. So with these, you want to make sure, I like to tie my piping bag around my finger and then I'll hold it between my thumb and my finger so it's nice and tight. You want everything to go down, not anything to come back up. So I don't know if you guys can see the way I have it tied around my finger. And then the mummy's wraps. On these ones, I'm just gonna do the wrap. A 
or sideways. And then we do a one-eyed mummy. Two-eyed mummies. You could use the same techniques um, for uh, like frozen bananas as well. Make boo bananas, I call them. That stripe around the eyes. We'll do one big eye and one small eye on this guy. And there you have it. Ooh. Your mummies. Ooh. Adorable. Those are so cute. They are adorable. And they're just so fun to make. You could get the kids in on this. All right, let's see. So these are perfect. See if I could get some usable chocolate here. So for these, you want to stick it in, twirl, and then you're gonna dab it off. You wanna go very lightly because you don't wanna use it. You could click the side of the stick, get all that access off. There's pop. I think I can get a little bit more off. We don't want it to drip when we're sticking it in our stand. And we want a nice and smooth, even coating. We don't want it too chunky on one side. Takes a little patience, a little work at it, but oh, so worth it. There we go. Put it right here. Let's do a peanut butter. Javel, how is that stick not going through the hole, like going to the, do you have a stopper underneath? No, I just kind of angled it and it just sticks oh. right, right in there. Okay. Mine always end up with flat tops because I don't think of to put them in something like that. <laughs> yeah, you could actually buy um, styrofoam piece. Uh, you could find those at Joann's or like those same things that come in, um, to decorate like floral fake flowers, that little styrofoam base you put in the base. You could buy one of those and use that. But I think at Joann's and Michael's, they actually have one for cakes specifically. Ooh, that guy wants to almost fall off the stick. Tapped him a little too hard. Another one of these. Again, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you want to dip it and then twirl it. Oh, 
If yeah. you've never made these, she's really making this look easy because it's not. <laughs> People tell me that all the time. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> I've lost so many that. cake balls that turned into truffles. <laughs> You just fish it out of the bowl and be like, oh, look, no stick. Okay. Yep. <laughs> or you end up eating the ugly ones and then you yeah, half that too. <laughs> oh, look, this one's ugly. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, my family loves those ones. All right, get that excess off. a little too much but you guys get the idea Susan sent me the flyer to your upcoming event so I'm like Ooh, okay here we go perfect thank you all right so um, on one of these I'm going to do this one first so let's get my blue ready You want to really massage it all in there and make sure it's all melted. You don't need um, a piping tip for this. You can just cut a tiny hole. And work with it that way. Um, you could also use uh, sandwich baggies if you don't have any piping bags. But this is where it gets even more fun. So we're gonna to try to make Jack Skellington. See him? Sort of. Love it. He looks awesome. Very cute. Very, very cute. That is brilliant. And then the other one, we're going to use our white. So this is if you want mummies. Oh, no, I'm losing them. This is one of those for the family cake pops. And they're not all gonna be gems. Oh no, see, happens to the best of us. We'll go with this guy, I'll fish him out later. These ones I use some eyeballs. And there you have your little mummy. So cute. That one's my favorite. The little mummies are so awesome. So there you have it. That's basically it. We have, and this one's gonna be a truffle now. <laughs> So, no fret, still tastes the same. That's right. Bandage this guy up. He was a truffle the whole time. And you got the eyes from Joanne's? Um, you can get the eyes from Joanne's. These ones I actually got from Ralph's. Oh, nice. And uh, the white chocolate I also got from Ralph's. It was a Kroger. They came in big blocks. Um, so far, not a fan of it. I do like the Wilton better. Um, 
but as long as you don't get too hot, it'll work. The one that I did buy came in a microwave um, safe tray. Uh, so you can microwave it if you want. And that might maybe work better since um, that's what it was more meant for was microwave. It said right on the package, um, microwave friendly, comes with a microwave safe bowl. So I probably should have went that route instead of the double boiler. Um, but live and learn. And it was my fault for trying anything. I didn't want to go all the way to Joanne's just to get white chocolate melts. Um, but Stater Brothers does have, um, I think they're Ghirardelli chocolate melts. And I really like those ones too. Uh, I haven't tried those. I'll have to try them. Yeah, they're really <laughs> good. They come in white chocolate and dark chocolate uh, coloring. Mm -hmm. And they're really, really good. They um, have such a good consistency. And I've used them on double boiler many a times. Um, I think even Smart and Final has like a Costco size bag of them. Really? So if you want to make a lot, uh, I would go there. Okay. Because I make uh, uh, that chocolate fondant where you mix in um, corn syrup. And so instead of fondant, it's like a chocolate dough. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always looking for other than having to go to Joanne's, like you said. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Smart and Final is a really good spot for some baked goods. They have large bags of all kinds of stuff. Um, and then I've also made my own marshmallow fondant. I've never done that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little sticky at first, but um, it comes out so much better than like Wilton fondant. It's so much more pliable. It doesn't crack as easily. It's so much more stretchy. So when you're cooking a cake, it's so nice. And also the flavor is so much better. I'm yeah. not a fan of fondant mm -hmm. to eat, um, unless it's the marshmallow fondant. I'll, I'll get down on some of that. Um, but I do love decorating with fondant. Yeah, see, and that's why I like the, the melted chocolate melts with the um, corn syrup. You mix it in and it turns into a, a nice, like a chocolate dough. Yeah. And it's yep. still got that good flavor. I can't stand the taste of fondant. Ugh. Me neither. Yeah, it's called, um, I don't know why I can't think of it right now, but there's a name for that chocolate dough. I'm going to have to look for it and then send it in the email uh, with different options you could use. If you want to use fondant on the cake pops, you totally can. Uh, it takes a lot more work. Uh, wrapping each little cake pop. Um, I've done it before and it's a lot of work. This is so much easier once you get a hang of it with the chocolate. Once you get that right consistency, nice and runny, um, it's, it works really well. But you can take your time and use uh, fondant, definitely. Yeah. Well, and you can do a lot of them once you get it going. Like you mm -hmm. have two colors normally in a home kitchen when we're not mass producing, you would just use one color and you would just make everything and then you would yep. just go. Exactly, yeah. Um, you could always coat all of your um, little truffles or cake pops uh, with one whole color and then use several piping bags with different colors to do your decorating hmm. with that. It's super easy once you get to this point. Um, I do recommend sticking these in the freezer for a couple of minutes just to get them uh, nice and solid, but they're already pretty, getting pretty solid. My stripes are still a little wet. So Sam's Club also has Ghirardelli melts. They're very seasonal. So when they sell out, they're gone. They're right. Oh, very thank cheap. you, Susan. Uh, I've seen big bags there too. But yeah, there you have it. Got your mummy, you got Jack Skellington, or just a Skellington, Skellington, mm -hmm. and your little spiders. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Chef yeah. Val. This was awesome. You guys are welcome. Is there any other questions while I'm here? Anything at all? We've had some great ones so far. This we're gonna try. We're gonna try it. Hopefully everyone that's on here can try it out and take a picture of your final your final um, product and then <laughs> send your pictures to Brittany and she'll put it in the slideshow for our meeting on the 30th 30th yes hey, I would love to see those too yes okay. we'll send them to you Cheval.
Perfect. Thank um, you so I am much. recording this, so I'll send you guys the recording too, so you can watch it all back again while you're cooking them. And please feel free to email me if you guys have any questions in a pinch. Um, I'm always open. Just email me any questions you have, even if you're just cooking dinner and you need some ideas. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Thank nice. You. Thank you. This was fun. And also, she created a whole menu for um, a breakfast, lunch, and two snacks. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, two snacks, right, Val? In between, um, for every day. So, like, there's a whole. If you go to that YouTube channel, you'll see um, she, she does, yeah, amazing uh, meals. Yeah, it, there's actually a um, workout and meal kind of prep uh, workshop that we put up. That's a four week program. So it's got a whole week of lunches, a whole week of dinners, a whole week of breakfast, and a whole week of snacks, um, plus a daily 30-minute workout. Mm -hmm. If you guys are, want to check that out, too. Um, and then also on our SRC Facebook page, um, I have weekly tips and recipes that go up. And then if you're on TikTok or Instagram, I have um, Tuesday tips on there. Um, anything from adding a little salt to your coffee grounds and your coffee maker to balance out the acids. Wow. Um, yes, girl, salt. Okay. Just a salt in your grounds, and it takes that tannin, that like puckering feeling in your mouth that some coffees have. Mm -hmm. I don't really like that um, too much in my coffee, so I just add a little bit of like kosher salt, and it really balances out that acid. Hmm. So check those out. I even have one of uh, street tacos. You could put the, um, the little soft taco uh, tortillas. You could put those in your toaster and then they puff up and you could cut it and stuff it. So many cool hats. So check them oh, out. Oh, yum. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for coming. This was an awesome class. I miss doing these and it was so fun getting these, uh, cake pops and truffles out for you guys. Um, I'd love to see all of your pictures and we should do this again sometime. I am hoping to start a chef for hire, like we have a fit for hire. Um, so hopefully in the next uh, quarter or so, I'll have that going and, and we could do private, free private uh, demos. Cool. Awesome. awesome. We'll probably hit you up for um, a holiday one for yeah, when we get closer to December. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me know. I love the holidays. We need the holidays right now. Yes. Yeah, we do. All well, right. Thank, with you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.